Hello there, it's Mike. And Katie. It's episode 159. The one with Christmas. This week on Cup of Rad. Hey everyone, we're back and we're drinking warm coffee. Mmm, coffee. It's delicious. And you know what? It's extra special because he put eggnog creamer in it. That's right. It's just eggnog, um, but we're using it as creamer. Because it is our Christmassy episode. Oh, oh, oh. I even have my Grinch mug. Yeah. I broke out, I broke out the uh, Merry Sithmas. Yeah, mine's Merry Grinchmas. So we're very um, happy Christmassy feet. Yes, it's warm and glowy. <laughs> but you know what's inside the mug? is warm and glowy. That's right. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like a warm hug wrapped in oh, coffee. It's actually really good. So... I'm impressed. Yeah. So I was just go. complaining that the eggnog didn't make good enough creamer. Well, I did also add some regular creamer, so. Oh, so we're fancy up here. So it's like. A cup yeah. of red fanciness. Yeah. Nice. Barista edition. Ooh, I like it. How do you like your coffee? Do you want it hot? <laughs> and spicy? Uh, so, um, yeah, this is our Christmas episode. Kind of weird that I know it's a couple couple weeks before Christmas. Yeah, I get it. You know, we, maybe you're not ready for Christmas, but you know what? Damn it, we are. So <laughs> I was gonna say, that's uh, nice. you know, the reason why the reason why this is our Christmas episode is because next week is is the episode. It is the Spider Man episode, and let's be honest, that's important. And yeah, so you'd rather us ramble on about about no way something home or far from home or whatever the hell it is. The no way home. There we go. <laughs> it's the Calendar Man debacle over. It's Spider Man. Calendar Man goes to Vegas. Yes, I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's 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 what it's actually called. Um, I'm on the DL, so yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. They, they, they it's gonna totally, just totally surprise everyone. Yeah, when it comes up there, and you're just gonna see Calendar Man goes to Vegas, and they're like, "What? I was thought I was watching a Spider Man movie, but no, no, no." I wish you could make animated movies or stop motion movies, and I want Calendar Man to go to Vegas. Because it would actually be poking up, man. I was going to say, if people haven't listened to that episode where we made that snafu, then they'd be like, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? What? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, you know, we're getting ready for Christmas and uh, we thought, you know, we'd definitely take advantage of this weekend trying to watch some Christmassy movies to really get us in the ho, ho, ho spirit. Well, this next week coming up is crazy. Yeah. Uh, things happening, parties, events, appointments. All sorts of fun things. So, you know, we don't quite know other types of Christmas movies that we can kind of fit in as well. So it works, man. It, it works. totally does. And that's the so thing. So we took full advantage. It's cheer. Because then, too, if you like anything that we say about the movies that we watch today, then guess what? You can go ahead and watch them yourselves. You've got time. You don't have to wait. That's right. Because we did Too Close to Christmas. We dropped can a week you, after. Can you slow it down then, a little bit? Auction your mic. <laughs> <laughs> to watch them all really is impressive uh so and uh, regular speed a little bit faster uh, uh. and so that's why we decided oh. that we would end up going forth with doing the christmas movies at this time for you we'll also <laughs> slather on some other things that we find interesting about the holiday season it's fantastic so uh so i brought presents she did i actually you know i i little bit into Christmas. Time. I was actually full on expecting her to put them in boxes and then call me down and say, wrap these. No, I considered it. And then I'm like, no, Katie. Oh, my goodness. That's ridiculous. I've retained my wrapping skills from my days of ye old retail. I hate wrapping. I used to love wrapping, but I hate it because. But you know what? This year was better. I used our hard floor and that actually helped a lot. Hmm. It wasn't nearly as stressful. Wrapping on a bed or soft surface with is cats. a nightmare. With cats? Yes, with cats. So, so that was good. I'll just wherever I lay. You know. Yeah, he just makes it work. I don't know how he manages it. I'm just that good. <laughs> I'm just that good. I can do it anywhere. Too touche. Anywhere, anytime. <laughs> You're there. Yeah. You got it. Um, taking care. Taking care of business. Because <laughs> there's some magic and some mystery. What I can do. It's all part of your history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's your Christmas present. Uh, we love you. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, packages still haven't started flowing for us. So there's still some stuff in the mail that we're like, seriously, go on, get here. It's all stuck in Vancouver. It's all just waiting. I could uh, drive there faster and get it. Probably. 
Sometimes you wish you could just do that. I wish. Be like, hey, you know what? This here's is my, my email. This is my package. Here's my tracking number. Hand um, me my package. Here's my address showing that it's shipping to this address. Yep. Can you please give this to me? Relinquish it to me now because yes. your Christmas presents are in limbo. So... Not all over Christmas, Katie's Christmas. It's just, just the main one. Just the main one. No big deal. But so what did we watch, Mike? We watched a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> well, then why are we here to drink coffee and ramble on? Exactly. Ramble on. We do. Rambling on. Uh, so we found out on Netflix that there was a movie, a new movie that came out this last weekend. It was called A Boy Called Christmas. Yes. Or was it a boy, boy named Christmas? A boy called Christmas. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure now. I'll, I will look it up. Uh, I'm 99% sure it was called, called. Christmas. Called. Uh, I wrote called down, but now I'm like... Because his na- she called him Christmas. His name was But his name Nicholas. was not a there we go. boy called Christmas. Yes. yes. There we go. Okay, so just to pretend everything that just happened didn't happen. I, sorry, side tangent. I, I love when you... Um, Oh, by the way, I found it when I put annoy, A-N-O-Y. Um, annoy Christmas. But I love the other things that it suggests that you might be looking for, like a boy in his blob or a boy called Bat. Huh. Anyways. So a boy called Christmas is from the studio that did uh, Christmas Chronicles, and it's also a Studio Canal studio film. Canal, yeah. So uh, this is the story, uh, one of the many stories of how Christmas the origins was of Christmas. Christmas. Uh, you know, there was one thing that I, though I was watching, and when we were watching this, I realized to myself, I was like, no wonder some kids can get so angry at their parents for lying about, you know, a certain ho ho ho. We're not lying. Um, we're massaging the magical truth. Yeah. You don't know who's listening. I don't know who's listening. No. Don't ruin it. The magic. Sorry. That's unacceptable. Okay. Well, we just need to swear and then it'll be okay. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> and we're marking that explicit because there's explicit items. Ex- it's thematic events. Thematic events. <laughs> <laughs> when the MPA doesn't know what to do, thematic, thematic events. Thematic events, yeah. Okay, anyway, so yes. Uh, but the Crushing idea, their hopes and dreams. Uh-huh. The, <laughs> the realization that there's all these movies that tell all these different tales, you know, where like if you get something like... Hercules were pretty much the stories all the same. Yeah. There are little details here and there that are it's changed. It's whether he's just an asshole or not. You know, or like events here and there that kind of, kind of, you know, very, very small things change. Yeah. But like when you talk about Santa Claus, the mythos on that is like multiverse territory within our own universe. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, because it's interesting when you think of like, say, Greek legends and myths and stuff, there is, yeah, there's small variations, but overall they Mm -hmm. stuck. And and then then you got to wonder, like, if you compare those to it. Right. Yeah. Like, so it's just it was just interesting because I'm like, I watch I started watching these movies and it was just my thought of like, you know. How do you reconcile that? You know, I, I, I my illusions were. If you want a stocking, believe, yeah. right? And so I was like, well, I like presents, so. You know what? It's, it's a strange thing for me. I do not remember learning the truth. I don't remember when my life changed and switched. I remember, you know, I know I, I really don't remember when I actually really Maybe didn't you never believe did until you met me. <laughs> I know. Then he Mike ruined it for me. Um, but the thing is, though, is I had an older sister who helped. I think that's probably why, though, is we still played the same game and the same tradition and per, and and went along with the fun of it. Yeah. Until I well, until I moved out. Yeah. Like every single Christmas was always the same. And I knew, obviously, I'm 16. I would have known better. Yeah. But I don't remember consciously making that choice or ever being angry at my parents mm-hmm. for it. And I don't ever remember, like, they never once talked to me. It was like this thing that just happened. Maybe my sister talked to me about it. Or sometimes I question whether it was that bad and that traumatic that I literally blocked it out and just made another thing up in my head. Um, that could have happened as well. Yeah. But I just, it was okay. And I think there's so much worry for me about 
like it, it actually gives me anxiety thinking about a child who goes through that in a traumatic fashion. Oh, yeah. Because like, as I say, we 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 just we went along. I, I we still put cookies and we still had a note. And I, I know I remember knowing that it was my father who wrote the note yeah. back to us. But we still just went with it. Yeah, because it was fun. And I think it was it obviously it made it was more important for me to have that fun. And that was one of the few times where as much as we would still argue, but maybe before Christmas or everything, Christmas Day, we never argued. Yeah. And between the, my three siblings, it was it was something that actually still brought us together. And we st- it was we would always kind of out in the same room. We would have all that stuff. And it was more important for me to have that connection and that experience than to you know, go against something. So I think I just, I, I kind of went with the magic of Christmas and yeah. I think it just naturally replaced the legend and the myth feel. Yeah. And that's what I really, really hope happens for our house. Right. Yeah. It's just to not be the callousness of, if you want something, believe, damn it. It's the importance of the, it's like the polar express idea. Yeah. Right. And I, I want to keep that alive, but it's getting harder and harder every year. Because then he starts seeing things in the world. And, yeah. And at some point, I don't want to be mean about it. But I also, you know, I'm kind of just every single time we watch a movie, I'm waiting for something to happen. The questions. Yeah. I, I don't wonderment. know if it's going to be where he just lets it. It just rolls over and it just disappears. Or is it one day they're going to be a question or like, I'm terrified to answer that. Right. <laughs> Anyways, there's it. There you go. The, well, yeah. Yeah. It's that idea, though. Like, you know. I don't know. I, I just continued to play with it because I was like, well, it's more important. I guess what's more important. Right? Yeah, I, 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 I still get some cool stuff. I still get to have that. that yeah, because excitement. If Santa doesn't come. That's one less present. But like I knew my, I knew exactly how my family worked with stockings and everything. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird, man. It's weird. But I never want to. If I if I if I if I've ruined Santa for you, I'm sorry. But it's it's the spirit of giving, though, right? At the end, at the end well, of it, the whole idea is Santa the spirit of giving, is, right? Is, yeah, he represents, and that. So back to this movie, Santa is a conduit of hope and magic and love and giving and selflessness, right? And that's the most important part, right? Yeah. And so that's the whole point of all these movies in general, is is the Santa is just a a picture to go with the spirit, and mm. that's something you I think you can get behind for yeah, everyone, right? That Coca Cola so. created. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Fuck. <laughs> there it was. There we can have the explicit. Yeah. Hey, that is that. I found that out in grade 12 art or grade 11 art. Our teacher. Santa is just a marketing machine. When I, our teacher <laughs> went ahead and he, he had pictures and all this stuff. And he was like, just so you know, the, here's the history of the classic Santa Claus. He was created by Coca-Cola to sell Coke. He did a damn good job of it. And too. to it was before that, before that, it was the 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 long robe. I was going to say like he was the, more the longer the coat, right? Yeah. yeah, the more European looking Santa. Yeah, the classic traditional one was created in like the fifties or something. Yeah, right. So he had, that version of it hasn't really been around that long, yeah. but yet people like hold on to that stronger than they hold on to Jesus <laughs> at Christmas, <laughs> and it's wild, right? Like, yeah, because like. Yeah, so, but, so, anyways, boy called Christmas. <laughs> you get, you get, you get it. You know, hey, a boy called Christmas on Netflix. Who was not created by Coca Cola? <laughs> no, he looked like an elf. <laughs> so the whole story about that is, is that they, um, it's in Finland, is it? Yeah, I. So I really liked that it was so real based. Uh, the very beginning where you could see where maybe some of the legends of mm. something would have come from in this real world thing. Yeah. So he's a young boy who has lost his mother and it's just him and his dad and they live they're in this hungry, cabin and they're, they're just bad times. Yeah, everyone's starving. The whole country is on bad times. I do. I do like this. So the king invites all these people over and he's like giving them this big speech. I do find it hilarious that they're in Finland and everyone has an English accent. Yes, that was excellent. except for like except for like the real woodsman. Yeah. All right. Like. They're the real woodsmen in the back have more of that Scandinavian yeah. accent. Like the, the, they have to the, sound scary. The bad guys, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but so the king brings him and he's all like, you know, we need to find magic and hope and all this kind of stuff in the well, world. Well, because he asked him, he's like, you know what? I'm thinking, what what do you guys need the most? Yeah. A healthcare system, you know, sustainable food, food, you know, homes. homes all he's like, no, no, no. I think you guys need hope. That one struck hard, though. And it's like, holy crap, that is real life right there. The government's like, what do you need? Oh, you, oh no, we can't do that. We can't do that. So how about this? How about some hope? Hope that things will get better. Hope that things will change, even though they won't. Awesome. It was just, it was depressing to start the movie. And like you know, that. it's funny because he's not, the king actually wasn't a bad guy. No. He was just lost and depressed. Mm hmm. And for him, it was like, well, I can't solve that, so I can ask for this. Right. But he couldn't imagine otherwise, so he was just sad. Yeah. So he actually turned out to be a really good guy. Yeah, a decent person. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a good commentary on it. He wasn't doing it out of being evil or anything, spite. But like, yeah, it was a way too, it was almost a little too modern of a of yeah. a, a jab yeah. at, at politics and government in general. Mm -hmm. you know, that You ask for real things that you really need and they're just like, well, we can give you an idea. Right? So yeah, so it's, it starts with his, you learn that his mom had always told him this this story oh, um, of when she was a oh, child fine. and ventured off high to the far north and found, yeah, Elf. Elfheim. Elfheim. It always sounded like Elfheim. Elfheim. Um, but Calendar Man. Calendar Man, exactly. Um, and, but that's the, uh, with the, in Norse mythology, everything's Heim, yeah. right? So. Jotunheim. Jotunheim. Um, Jotunheim. But then, uh, but the idea that no one could find it again because it, it, she even kind of mistook, it didn't quite make sense, the stories that she told, but they just, no one believed her, right? Yeah. Um, and, and it was this supposed to be the most magical, wonderful place where the, the elves lived. Yeah. And um, she was the only one that seemed to believe in it. So then basically her his dad gets called in to the, go with his group of guys on this quest to go find hope. So he's going to be gone for a couple months. So he brings his uh, uh, the aunt in, played by Kristen Wiig. Yeah. And, Good old uh, Finnish girl. Oh, yeah. And she's... Uh, She's all weird and, and but pop peppy and happy and everything. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. And then as soon as the dad leaves, she turns into a freaking nightmare. Yeah. Kicks him out of the house, basically. And just it's like, well, so. this is my place now. And you can just be my little slave. Right. Yeah. So she's terrible. So it's a traditional like fairy tale story. Right. Mm -hmm. Like very much. So. It's like the, step, that... the evil stepmother feel right. Yeah. Where everything's great until the, the you know loving parent is gone. Mm -hmm. And um and in the midst of this, so she's, she just could care less about him. And he finds this, um, this uh, map, map in the hat, in inside the hat that looks like a Santa hat yeah. that uh, her his mom had made for his dad, and it had a map to, um, to the mystical place. So he decides he's going to go off and save him because uh, he's got to find his dad. He's got to find this place, and so he takes off. So, pretty strong. Uh, what. 12 year old boy wandering through mm -hmm. the snowy woods in the middle with a of the talking winter. mouse yes he taught his mouse how to talk uh, that was a little so weird. then magic started yeah with that basically and it was and he the was concept. a conduit of magic yeah it was the context that the belief in everything right so it's that you know believing you can do something or believing that it exists is more important than seeing that it actually can happen right? yeah um and that's of course the constant reminder when it comes to the myth of santa right and uh and so he ends up, he makes friend with a reindeer mm -hmm. who ends up, uh, Blitzen. Yeah. With Blitzen. <laughs> uh, sorry, Lake Blitzen. No. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the idea. Like Blitzen was, a, it was Lake Blitzen that his mom would take him to. So then that's where that came from and that sort of thing. So he ends up actually finding the elves. Now I just want to know how, what, if he named Blitzen after the lake he went to with his mom, like. How did all the other ones get named? Yeah. Like, do they all have names that are so we've been to... on a uh random uh, no never mind i was gonna say we've been trying to find like i want to try to teach a uh i want to try to teach our son how to do some more like researchy type mm. you know f going down the rabbit hole trying to find information and i was like oh i could ask him like how are the reindeer named but i don't think i want to set him on a quest to find out about myths about santa claus <laughs> online <laughs> so never mind Ways that Katie destroys my my research. It was for educational purposes. purposes. That would be something I would do. Foot in mouth that way. Never mind. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, that would have been hilarious. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I didn't. 
a few years ago when they did a thing about Christmas, I'm surprised he didn't find out then. I'm surprised that no one at school, but he must not talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's going to adamantly defend the existence of Santa Claus, but I'm wondering that that has, how does that not come up? Oh yeah. I've I, I I heard, I heard people scream at, at, at you know. Right. Like, and I'm, I've been so afraid the concept of some, some bully going out there and, and, you know, screaming high, you know, all about that, that Santa Claus isn't real and him trying to stand up. And I was like, I don't know if he would or not, or what he would say. He's yeah, never come home. would never get involved. But he would probably just not get involved. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, so, so he finds the, the elves and, and they're all like repressed and like hiding their Christmas culture because evil Lynn is there. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. So the, 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 the now leader of the elves looks like evil Lynn. it's great. And it's basically a, a story of her mistrusting humans because you find out that the group of men actually had made it there. Yeah, um, and, and so it's that, that, that concept of him trying to teach them that not all humans are bad and that he really has, um, you know, he, this place was supposed to be happy and magical and he really does want to help them and restore that happy and magic. And he's just doing it with selflessness. He's not doing it to try to bring something back home. Yeah. He's not trying to capture their magic. You know, he, he generally wants to help them and, you know, he helps, he, um, you know, he makes friends with all these people. He helps everyone around. He's, he's, he's selfless. And so he finds out that of course they're, they do make toys and they're not being able to share them with anyone. Mm -hmm. And so he decides he's going to need to share them to around. deliver them. So then that's the, the concept. So that seems to be a pretty um, repetitive story that happens where he finds this group of toy makers that doesn't have anyone to share it with. And yeah. it's the kind of the quid pro quo feel, you know, I'm going to bring magic and do this because I want to help people. And you have things that you need to give to people and let's make this, you know, it's a little joint venture work. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, but what's cool is the king then is is it actually gets involved with it. You know, he brings it back to the king and the, he, the king gets all sprightly and happy. And yeah. so he actually helps it uh, helps deliver the presents, which yeah. is pretty awesome. And I, so it was it was cool opposed to say like one of the old Rankin Bass ones where, you know, they got the, the baron that is, you know, just trying to stamp out Christmas mm -hmm. and doesn't want to help. And you have this this king who is all excited that there's going to be joy and magic spread yeah. and not acting like it's a way to have ki you know people run out of control or mm -hmm. anything like that so I, I really like that oh yeah right so. it was a really adorable movie it definitely for me feels like it was a little it was younger yeah right like you know kiddo enjoyed it mm -hmm. but definitely it wouldn't be one that i think he would enjoy in a year or two yeah because it, it, it is more geared probably for your 10 and under yeah, I was. A, yeah, it's a little bit. I mean, there is the thematic events of of parents dying. Yeah, um, it's the the fairy tale. The, it's it's in the level of thinking of a, a minor fairy tale. Yeah, um, the 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 problems like that, um, because in all fairy tales, parents die. Um, but but yeah, it wasn't. There's no real deep growing. There's no growing up for him. Yeah, really. And it's really quick because it's like a ninety minute movie, right? Yeah, and the the switch over of of how having the elves um you know accept him and that what he wants to do is happens pretty quickly as well without so. yeah without a lot of extra kind of like convincing her thought yeah or, and really when it comes to some of the more adult excuse me the adult speaking the idea of you know the concept with the, say the king and the, the 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 plight that the adults are going through mm -hmm. Um, is is a relatively back relative backstory, you know. Yeah. But you know, it, it helps the idea of there. There's themes of of trust and acceptance and belief and magic and 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 wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. So they're they're good things, but they're yeah, they're not going to speak to a lot of older teenagers, yeah. right? So. Right. Because because I, I think some of the stuff makes it like the mouse talking and stuff make it a little bit more more kid friendly, yes. right? And the kid and the mouse is so silly. Yeah, really. You know, he's kind of quippy, but he is still silly. Yeah. yeah. So. so but I, I really did enjoy it. It was a, it was a good, fun family film. Oh, um, yeah. It's always fun. It was it was nice to see. Um, it was fun to see a live action origin movie like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was that was interesting to see. And as I say, I like kind of seeing the um, kind of real world that might have, you know, where he got his his hat. Yeah. You know, all those types of things. Right. Yeah. So. No, no, it was it was definitely worth a watch, especially if you're looking for a fun Christmas movie that's a little different, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it's it's not, you know, you're looking for something 
that is solely Christmas based doesn't have a lot of like extra to it. Right? Yes, it is. A, it is a whole Christmas story. So it is definitely an enjoyable one. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're looking for something live action, I would still say Klaus, the animated one that came out last the other year. <sighs> that one is worth it. That was an excellent movie. Right. And that's kind of another origin of Santa. Right. Yeah. Which is well put together yes very much uh, so So that's on netflix as well so that's one you haven't seen that one is worth worth checking out for that kind of origin of santa feel right yes next up we decided to break into a little bit of the romance well it's our closest to uh, hallmark movies we can get yep so it was on like every possible streaming service available yeah uh, which i think is hilarious when we looked it up uh Love Actually. Mm-hmm. And this one, you know, is taught as this big Christmas movie, right? And it's like... Because it's like an anthology movie, right? It's that concept because there's so many different stories. Yeah, interwove, interwoven stories. Right? Yeah, okay. So uh, it's quite a few... Quite, quite old now. I honestly didn't realize that it... I thought it was older, which is a weird thing. I don't know, which is... I know I had seen it before, but I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to tell you exactly what it was about. So that was fun. Yeah. But it stars like every, everyone and anyone. Right. I couldn't believe the the list of people, right? Pretty impressive. Um, It was from 2003. So it's pretty old. It's almost, almost 20 years old. Yeah. Right. What was interesting was like right on the bat, right off the bat, there was a warning about, um, homophobic and transphobic yeah uh, dialogue so yeah the idea that it so might then i was watching thing. for that and i you know what we decided there should have been a warning for fat shaming yeah there's a lot more fat shaming there was a lot more of that in it than anything else like, there was just a couple lines that were would be more homophobic i never saw anything transphobic the only thing was the comment on the doll that the doll oh, looked like a transvestite okay yeah yeah okay that makes sense so that's that's what it said um so that was the only, but that was the only commentary. So I'm like, I'm assuming that's what they're referring mm-hmm. to. She wasn't, it, it was said, I guess, in a negative connotation. In a that, uh, that the idea of this is an ugly doll. Yeah. Which, uh, which of the ugly dolls should we give her? Yeah. Well, that was the context of it. So that would be where it, where it okay, came Okay, that from. makes sense. But, oh, but one thing I did note, though, on, on a positive for the uh, not being homophobic was Liam Neeson when he is talking to his son. He asks who she's in love with, and it was who is she or he? Yeah, and he says it immediately, right? Yeah. And it's not with a like or he. Yeah, you know, it's said very open and positive. So that was one thing that was kind of redeeming quality for it on okay. that side. So that, that's all I noticed. There was more negative of oh making fun of the size of the woman's thighs than anything else, and I was just like, yeah. Wow. There was there was a few there was a few more like that kind of thing, but I guess yeah, but. That's the reality of it. Yeah. It, you know. No, no, no. Like, yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, it was just always like, I was expecting. I was expecting something more jarring in your face. About yeah, it. right? Like. Yeah. Um, but it's at the same time. Forced. I would rather them put that on there and still let people see the movies than to not. But this, you know, it, it is difficult at the same time to say, teach some how are you going to teach them what isn't acceptable if you don't point out what is the thing that caused it yeah and you know so that that is if we're sitting here questioning and looking for something to have been wrong Mm -hmm. is it really helpful yeah or if would i not noticed it as much you know it's i think it's more it would be helpful if you could try to teach people the what maybe could have been said there in the place or you know, like say the concept of teaching people that transvestite isn't a, the the best word to it's use. It's a clinical, you um, know, DSM five term. Yeah. So is it you know teaching them that okay? Because if I learn that that word is not the proper the best word to use, then I don't need the warning to tell me. I yeah. can just hear it and be like, oh, that isn't the best best yeah. place for it. But if you don't ever teach them, if you had no idea, then be like, well, what was the problem? Mm-hmm. And then now, then you're going to make people just ignore those things and be like, don't be so touchy. They're, they're like, yeah, they're like the cigarette yeah. warnings. And then it just gets so frustrating because yeah. then it's like, well, why should I care? Because I don't even know what I did wrong. Yeah. Type so yeah, if so, they had a warning that actually said the the movie uses, uses this term. Outdated, outdated things. Like, you know, then yeah, then that would make more sense. Uh, but anyways, anyways the movie was, itself. <laughs> 
Well, it was the first time we'd come across a warning like that. So yeah, it was yeah. Something new. I never, I never had a warning like that. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see like what happened in it that that I don't remember being yeah. a problem. Like, you know, I could see that being on Ace Ventura, mm, right? Yeah. Because and it would be clear. It would be it totally makes sense for being on Ace yeah. Ventura. So, who was your? What was your favorite story in in Say Love? Actually, uh, I like Liam Neeson with his son. Yeah, I think his stepson. I think it was pretty genuine and pretty. Um, he was so warm, you know, even though he was dealing with the death of his, his wife and all that things were, he was trying to still be a rock for his, his son Mm -hmm. and his son was going through his own turmoil of being in love with someone that he believed didn't know who she was. I I love that it, you know, and kudos on, on Liam Neeson for not ever mocking his son. That was like almost an aspiring, Mm -hmm. not like I mock my son, but it was the idea of (laughs) an aspiring thing to be, to be able to be like, it doesn't matter if our judgment on what someone and it's it's for any human being. Yeah. The judgment of what is important or monumental to another person Mm -hmm. is theirs alone to decide what is important and monumental. Yeah. And if we love that person, it's our job to understand that it's important and monumental to them and try to help them through it. And if he had just said, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not in love. He could have just ignored it. Mm -hmm. And the kid would have just gone into a black hole. Right. Those feelings aren't going to go away for him. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just, that was, I think the most poignant lesson out of the whole thing. The most beautiful idea and aspiration right there. Right. Oh, totally. Was it Christmas based though? I, you know, the story that was not Christmas based story. No, no. So the bulk of it, it's just, it, it loosely takes place at Christmas. It does. There is a Christmas party. There is Christmas shopping. There's a Christmas play. There's barely any Christmas music at a Christmas party. They don't play Christmas music. They don't even sing a Christmas song at the Christmas pageant. That is true. And the lobsters. Christmas and there's lobsters. Lobsters and like other creatures at the mm-hmm. at the nativity scene. So there's a but there's a Christmas shopping and a Christmas gift that causes problems. That's the only one that it really is a Christmas story. And By that's the way, the that's one a that really has... ugly necklace. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like the necklace. I personally thought it was really ugly. Um yeah, the 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 Alan Rickman story is the closest to Christmas because yeah. that one is the one that shows Christmas the most. The most because you actually it's see the Christmas presents, party, you see, Christmas you see the Christmas shopping, and you have the opening presents. So yes, and the it. pageant. So There's the their saddest story. story is actually the most connected to Christmas. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so, but I was like, I was watching, it and I was like, you know, it's very, very loosely, yeah, Christmas movie. Yeah. So it's interesting that it's it's oh it's always touted as one of those one ones to watch at Christmas time, right? It's on a lot of those. Lists well, we were arguing. Stuff. I told him it was just as much of a Christmas movie as Die Hard, and he was not okay with that. You know, Die Hard is more of a Christmas <laughs> movie than this is. Die Hard takes place the entire movie takes place at a christmas party i know there is christmas music he even says the words i'm going home to see i'm going to see my wife and kids for christmas he writes ho 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 now i have a machine gun on a dead man yes we know these things it, it's do we know these things i you do I, notice i notice <laughs> that's why i say <laughs> die hard is felt more like a christmas movie and even the end i believe die hard is a christmas movie the end even it ends with a Christmas song playing over the credits. That is true. That is true. But this, but love actually is the the they they come home after Christmas. It's just travel. Never mind. Okay. True. We don't really see Christmas happen. We just see Things them all it. leaving after. So. Yeah. Okay. I really like the the Hugh um, Grant uh, mainly because I like Hugh Grant. Um, I think he's just adorable. Um, but one thing that was an interesting take on it was how terrible apparently elected officials are and leaders and especially the <laughs> US. u.s president they're running off of the bill clinton still right. you know, concept with that um and i thought that was that was an interesting interesting thing but it was kudos on um prime minister there for at least understanding that i am not going to be able to work like this the poor girl though um <laughs> But it it is sure that there's a power aspect though, that, that, of being that. like you know she just got fired because he couldn't control himself basically. right and it, so it's like it's it's terrible at the same time that he's also like 
adorably in love with her. Yeah. So, like, I appreciate that he wasn't using his power to then just get whatever he wanted. Yeah. He actually went and found her in uh, a relatively normal fashion, yeah. you know? And so he he did a, the better approach by it. He wasn't just trying to take advantage of her like oh, a, yeah. ske- a sleazy president. But, yeah, I thought Billy there was Bob. There's, there's a lot of a love and hate with that one for sure. Which he's is, always a jerk. He's always Christmas a movies. jerk, right? In his Christmas movies. He's terrible. He's like the epitome of the Grinch. Yeah. He's out there ruining things. Yeah. So he ruined mm. her Christmas. Mm-hmm. He did. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Love Actually, you know, out of, out of everything, it's a pretty it's a good, good movie. movie. It's an enjoyable romance movie because there is humor and all that. And there's a lot to actually like to look at when you're when you're looking at the the story of it all. Like it's well put together. Mm hmm. So um, it, if it's the most of the hallmarky kind of romancy that I watch, that's I'm OK going. with it. I, I I have no qualms watching it. Yeah. Right. It's not like, oh, God, I'm going to watch that. If you were like, hey, we're going to watch red and green sweater um, movies, I might I might have a harder time. Yeah, that won't happen. Right. But love, actually, uh, if you actually need a little love at Christmas, because love too is bad. actually all around us. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so bad. I was just like, oh, God, and, you know, I had that moment where what have I gotten myself into? I was like, no. This is like touted as a good movie, but the people who are saying this, are they of sane mind? <laughs> but there's so many actual actors in it. Yeah. That's what saves it. Yeah. They're actual actors. They're actually actors? <laughs> yeah. Actually acting actually actors? Actually actors in Love Actually. Anyway, oh, oh, wow. You, this done. is the day. No. Okay, Next. So anyways, uh, we watched a classic. We've talked about this before in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elf. Mm-hmm. Will Ferrell and uh, John Favreau's Elf. Uh, so there's probably not a lot we're going to say about it. Otherwise, that it's hilarious. It's one of my favorites. It's... Yeah, it's still, it still after makes me fully ones, laugh yeah. every single time I watch Out loud. it, and I cry at the end every year too. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a cl- it emotions. is truly a classic. It's a modern classic. Now it's not really modern anymore, but it's, yeah, it is. You know, I you know here here's this, um, in class they were given a choice between the new animated Grinch or uh, Elf. And most of the kids were like, oh, stupid. Oh, my God. I don't want to watch that. So they picked the 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 new animated Grinch. Oh. Right. So I'm like, OK, when we decided to watch it this weekend, I was like, it's still so good. It's funny. Yeah. It's like because I think it just fits that niche of just being a little bit goofy. And I well, think, it's like they can't get over the ridiculousness of of Buddy. Yeah. And even and even see it through and see the the childlike wonder Mm -hmm. that he is that it's a positive thing for christmas yeah and he just was an ex had to learn a new environment right but there was nothing wrong with his love and joy and appreciation of wonderful magical things and people right oh yeah and i think too though you get a lot of people that don't actually watch the rank and bass stuff anymore so now you've got a lot of you know, that's where this is influenced from. It's basically an ode to Rankin and Bass. True. I mean, that was what so, I grew up as Christmas. Yeah. And so, so then when you see this, you're like, it's real life. It's like a live action Rankin and Bass film. Yeah. Right? So. So, of course, I was going to love it. Right. So, you know, Elf is just one of those classics where, yeah, I, I can just laugh. Like, it's yeah. it's if you, you watch it, it it it's fun. It's a fun movie. Yeah. Um, You know, I think some of the best parts is the mailroom scene. Oh, yeah. You know, where it's still just like it's me when he like, you know, has like the the syrup syrups, my favorite. And he just dumps the guy's whiskey. I love the look on the guy's face. Just like, what the hell? You just drank all of it. Yo, kiddo is like, I don't think that's syrup. I think that's alcohol. I was like, you are right. (laughs) right? (laughs) So but do you have any favorite parts? Um, I love the ending. Um, I love the. The you know that that they all show up and when Jovi starts singing, I love that she she realizes that um, in their because of their first date as well. Mm-hmm. Just she's she's just so happy to see how happy he is. Yeah. They're just sharing new things with her and the the sheer joy of things. So then when she does see that he needs help and what's going on and and the idea of singing and going outside of her comfort and the it's the idea of a a sacrifice 
And I think that that's the the in this the to me is the spirit of Christmas is more of that sacrifice for someone else because mm-hmm. that's what you know his his dad was missing was everything was very selfish and about me 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 and when yeah. um, you know making that the idea of that sacrifice balance between making sure your family is there yeah. and maybe embarrassing yourself and going outside your comfort zone but it's to help someone else. Um, so I thought that I, I really like that yeah. and and the importance of. Of, um, and, and, and I, I, I don't know why, but literally every time there is a crowd of like a large group of people singing, something about it just hits an emotional chord with me. Hmm. Doesn't even matter what they're singing. It's some, it's overwhelming emotion for me. So there's some deep thoughts for Katie. Huh. Um, so when everyone starts singing, um, that's why I cry. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. You get a group of people and just any song or is it a Christmas song? No, it's any song. It's really? literally as long as they're decent singers. So like it's just overwhelming. If there was emotion. like a large group of people that decided to sing Who Let the Dogs Out, would you cry? <laughs> Pretty sure no, but in pain? <laughs> Mine it might be like my ears are bleeding. Fuck no, I'm gonna sing that song. Damn it. Two F bombs in one episode. It's explicit. We just saved your Christmas from destroying it if you have children that listen to us. Uh, so you ended up watching another Christmas movie um, with without me. I was busy doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that you do quite enjoy came out the other year. It's on Disney Plus. I uh, watched Noel. Uh, I I really love the different take of this movie, the the concept that the Kringle family um, it just keeps being passed down and they it's like almost a, a legacy between their family of heirs of that become Santa and uh, Bill Hader is supposed to be taking over as Santa, but um, he doesn't want anything to do with it at all, and his sister is always wanted to be involved and and be part of it and and um and santa or dad just kept saying well that's nice you know you you basically you can't and you just have to keep you know making sure everyone else stays on track and spread your cheer and and so he basically hater runs away when he's supposed to be it's getting close to christmas and she he ends up showing up what is in phoenix arizona and he starts a yoga retreat a yoga studio and she goes down to try to save him and bring him back and she starts you know just it's a little bit of that elf thing yeah where she's fish out of water uh, yeah it's, it's something brand new for her and not understanding um the world at all but she has the santa gifts she can speak and understanding the languages she knows who's good and bad just by looking at them she knows all these things she um and I just I love seeing all that unfold. And she really learns a lesson because she was very selfish, very much of a princess of this is just everything is mine and comes full circle to learn the, the importance of giving the gifts and not just getting the gifts yeah. and making sure other people are happy and just really understanding a deeper meaning of Christmas. Yeah. And so she ends up becoming Santa. And and because they they changed this, she, he's like, we've just been blindly following this tradition for thousands of years, but there's nothing in the rules that says a woman cannot be Santa. And um, and I love I love that that progression of that story. And so I, I, I think it's it's fun because her first night out when she goes for she she does most of the world, these presents, but she's clunky. She's in the suit that's over over fit you know too large for her because it's the idea that the suit's supposed to change to fit her when she fits the the, the role mm-hmm. and you can tell she still doesn't believe she belongs there like she's yeah. more okay with it than her brother but she doesn't really feel like it's going to be accepted yeah and she ends up going to this orphanage i think it's my favorite scene she goes to this orphanage and it was the first place that she had really f- noticed that she had some of these powers was there was a deaf girl that was there and she had sat down and started talking to her before and she just was able to to sign and her mom was like oh you know asl well no i i don't know i don't know how i did that Mm -hmm. and so she she had made this connection with this girl and so when she's there delivering delivering toys and she makes this big racket and wakes everyone up and the little girl says thanks santa and and doesn't even bat an eye that she's a, a girl yeah and she just gets so emotional about it and it's like okay everyone there just says thanks santa yeah and i and it so then after that the suit fits and she's it's just it was so 
it's so endearing yeah because it's that importance that if we hold on to something that it has to be a certain way and again forgetting the spirit and the purpose of it all mm-hmm. you know and um so yeah i i really really like the movie so no, i was it was going to be like oh i'll just put it on the background and if i don't finish it all i won't and yeah and then i always end up just having to watch all of it so when you start a movie, you kind of have to finish it. Yeah. So I watched that. Nice. Yeah. We also watched other couple things on Disney Plus. We watched uh, Duck the Halls, Mickey Mouse shorts, Duck the Halls. A classic, man. It is a modern Mickey cartoon that you should all watch on Disney Plus. It takes the Paul Ruddish Mickey Mouse shorts and gives us a 26 minute cartoon, a tale where Donald needs to migrate to the south for winter and he doesn't want to uh, because he wants to experience Christmas and Mickey and the gang decide to try to give him the best Christmas possible. But everything goes wrong because he needs to migrate because he needs to migrate because ducks aren't supposed to be there in the winter. And uh, we are both lovers of the Paul Ruddish Mickey Mouse shorts because they really bring, I believe, the spirit of the original black and white Mickey cartoons with a modern sensibility. Plus there are loads of Easter eggs of past Disney cartoons, theme parks, but there's also other pop culture references throughout these cartoons. Yeah. And they just, they're, so you can, you they're always a joy have to, to look watch. Around. There's just, yeah, there's just a joy to watch. Um, Mickey's flashback scene to the ye old years. I love there, his like Victorian era. Yeah. And he's got an accent. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just stuff in there. And you just, I laugh. I we've watched this thing multiple times, and it's probably one of my favorite Christmas shorts because it is just zany and well. At the end, Donald just goes absolutely nuts, and he's just so strung out on needing to make it to christmas day and he's falling apart literally beak falling yeah. apart and he's just gone crazy it looks and, like and the rat king from like the nutcracker yes and it just we, we, you had commented i wish they had a pop out oh i love that. a pop of, of, of the um, king of christmas because it's just so crazy and and it's just like holy crap it's like a kid who's just super wired on sugar because he and needs to make it sleep. through and lack of sleep and just all hell's breaking loose but i'm just gonna keep doing this yeah i'm not tired i'm not sick right and uh oh it's just so good and yeah. then uh, what kevin michael richardson is santa yeah which is excellent he's like the best santa voice ever yeah uh, jolly and stern and yeah whimsical so everything right? gets uh you know, so it's a matter of how they save Donald and save Christmas and, yeah. uh, and experience Christmas to say what Christmas means. And it was it's nice. It's a nice mm-hmm. message because we all just assume Christmas needs to be uh, about snow and, you know, everything's cold and everything yeah. like that. Right. But and there's lots of places that in not. the world that is not that way. Right. And so finding a finding something that's not based on just that that bubble that we're in mm-hmm. right so so yeah mm-hmm. highly recommend it yeah it's wonderful it's total totally a, a good time we also have been watching the bob's burgers yes uh, and those have been really fun to watch the christmas episodes because uh, disney plus has given us a lovely little like section of like adult animation that we can just quickly find all the uh episodes that are christmas based from mm-hmm. all the seasons so that's really cool the simpsons are there uh american dad Family Guy and uh, Futurama are all there, too. So if you're fans of that, nice. they've got that little like where you can just find those. And we ended up watching another thing. One of my favorite sitcoms. Oh, yeah. Uh, last the last man on Earth. Will Forte's uh, a post apocalyptic world. We watched the Secret Santa episode. Yeah. Uh, we invited we were telling kiddo. kiddo about it. We're like, ah, screw it. Let's just put it on. Yeah. And I laugh my ass off, as always, with that show. Yeah. Uh, Last Man on Earth is probably one of my favorite uh, comedy shows that has been created. I don't Uh, think you've ever watched something so many times. Yeah. And I I still just laugh. Like, it's just it's it's just a great story. And it was fun to watch that uh, that Christmas episode again. Yeah. You know, because it's just like, you know, how fun would it be? in an apocalyptic setting to just be like, Hey, we're going to go find Christmas presents and you just go and 
Well, like, I love that he just shows up and throws the Hope Diamond at him. Yeah, yeah. And Or here's the car, or here's yeah. this. Or here's the... Here's Tandy's that. present to himself was pretty awesome. The <laughs> kiddo's face was hilarious. I got myself a yacht. Are we got parties on the yacht? Nope, I'm going to blow it up. Yeah. Boom. Kiddo's like, what? <laughs> that just made me want to go back to watch those first episodes where he does I, all the stupid stuff. I found the trailer on IMVD for it, and I showed yeah. Kiddo that. And I was like, this is like the part, whole first season was him doing this stuff. Yeah. And he was like, you know, playing tennis rackets, tennis balls blowing in the, around the mansion yeah. and lighting things, blowing up cars. And Kiddo's just like, oh, my goodness, like, what is this? Oh, and I think of apocalyptic setting. Everyone thinks is going to be Walking Dead and we're all going to get badass Mad no. Max. But it's going to be Last Man on Earth. Like, it's probably the most realistic apocalypse apocalyptic oh yeah uh show i think ever because it really depicts the um isolation and torment yeah especially in that first season yeah right and then the struggles can you you imagine actually trying to keep yourself entertained you would go through a phase though where you're like i can do whatever the hell i want yeah and no one's gonna stop me you know but this that show takes place two years after the the apocalypse that actually wiped everyone out yeah so it's been by the time you see him, it's already been a long time of stuff. Exactly. Right? So, but yeah. Anyways. But yeah, it's on there. And we, yeah, watching the Christmas episode was super fun. So. Yeah. OK, last up. Yeah. So this is an HBO Max original uh, mm. and we were able to watch it through Crave. So if you're in the States, it's available through your HBO Max subscription. If you're in Canada, it's available through Crave. If you're anywhere else in the world, I'm sorry, I don't know where it's playing um it could be on other streaming or whatnot because i don't know all international stuff but uh it's one that i'd seen a trailer for a while ago and i was excited to watch it um and we were able to check it out it stars neil patrick harris and it's called eight bit christmas just nph man oh sorry sorry (laughs) We'll go back and watch a very Harold and Kumar Christmas. I really and... do want to watch it, actually. <laughs> like, I really do. I think that one, that one's also ended up on our, like... It's our... like, it's the, we've watched too much and too many kid things, and we need to watch some stupid adult things, and it's... it's the, night the night before, before and, and, and Harold and Kumar. Yeah, Kumar's it just has to happen. very Merry Christmas. So, anyway. <laughs> so, NPH. <laughs> uh, so, it, this is a story, it's kind of like a Christmas story, kind of feel where he's yeah. a narrator he's narrating the story to his his daughter and all yeah. that uh and it's 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 a flashback to the late 80s yeah I mean, it's all about the 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 craze of nintendo and the fact that like it caused these kids to like live and breathe wanting to play nintendo and get a nintendo and do anything to get a nintendo and um that's the whole basis of the story. And it takes place around Christmas because all he wants for Christmas is a Nintendo, right? Yeah. And then his sister, all she wants is a Cabbage Patch yeah. Kid, which also, of course, was not available as well. Exactly. So, so that's that's the, it's the group of friends trying to figure out how they can get a Nintendo and and the shenanigans that happen with it. And, and there's that, that, that camaraderie and the, the navigating the social scene as mm-hmm. well, right? So... And all I can like say about it was I laughed. Oh, yeah. I had a good time with this movie. I really enjoyed it. Like I would watch it again. No problem, because it was funny. And it as an adult, I got all those like, you know, nostalgia moments. Yeah. And all those those feelings of, of being a child from the late 80s, early 90s. But then also on the other side, being uh, a parent and having the idea of like telling those stories and having those those problems that he's having with his daughter. Yeah. Where his daughter, you know, because she just wants a cell phone. Boring, I want a cell phone. What are you talking about? I just want to text my friends. Right. Mm-hmm. So like it worked on two layers for me. Oh, yeah. Right. And it was super fun to watch. Like because I remember when Nintendo came out. Yeah. Like I remember when, you know, when Christmas morning I got a Nintendo. Right. Yeah. Like. That idea of that excitement, you know, when that NES system dropped, right? Yeah. It, it, you know, it's not just a video game. Like they say, it's an entertainment system. I think one of my favorite scenes is when he gets sucked into the demo at the store. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because all I could think about was our son. Yeah. And how because all they, they complain about their video game just being a zombie, you yeah. know, sucking you in. And he's supposed to be watching his sister. Well, they go upstairs and it just sucks you in. It's basically like 
who cares about your sister? She's useless. Just play me. Yeah, the Nintendo starts talking to him. And starts talking to him, and he just gets sucked into this world and this whole, like... why don't you come play a game? Yeah, and it's this crazy, you know, where he's... Now he's created this story where everyone in the mall is chanting his name, and he's a superhero and this, like, master Nintendo player. And I was like, is this what happened to Kiddo? Like... Because everything doesn't exist when yeah. he's playing his game. And you know what he tells me? I asked him, I was like, is that what it's like? He's like, well, it do- my Switch doesn't talk to me. I'm like, that's the thing. Okay, well, that's good that it doesn't talk to you. But <laughs> anything else about it? <laughs> right? So no. I thought that was really funny. As he like seeing like too, like even like Rampage. I remember playing Rampage. Like yeah. I had more moments where I'm like, this is amazing. Does he like break down the building and create handholds so he can climb to the top of it? Or yeah, you bro- oh, okay. you well no you no you climb the building. You, oh, okay. Your whole goal is to smash I've never them. Played it so you just gotta smash the buildings in the oh, fastest okay. time. Oh, okay. And usually there was a, a, a King Kong. Because there's no violence in that, just breaking buildings. No. King Kong. Uh, well, there was, there was that rock movie. That's what it's based on. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, huh. the wolf and then the uh, the lizard. Oh, and your whole goal was just to like tear buildings down. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, huh. yeah. He's older than I am, <laughs> and cooler. Uh, Is that better? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the but like the the kid that had the Nintendo that was like that real d bag. Oh god, right, and like only ten kids could get in, and they just sit there and watch him play video games. It and, was terrible. You know, and just... Well, so then the kids, um, it, it creates that you see the parents having this protest against video games because they're violent and they're causing all yeah. sorts of problems. And it's the, you know, kiddo was so mad because you you see what actually happened and then what the parents are spinning it as is if the video game is all to blame. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And he was so angry. Yeah. He's like, your kid's not, your kid's the problem. And blah, blah, blah. It's not the game. Right. I was like, yeah, but this is just a commentary on what actually what happened, happens. Right. Oh, totally. And uh, so that was interesting to see him saying that type of stuff. Yeah. But, um, but it had a wonderful message oh, it at was the a end. Um, great. Like, like it was, and it, it, it felt real yeah. too. It didn't feel like some mystical, like, everything tidied in this neat bow it felt real it still had a happy ending yeah but it it was it was so it was, it was so good. really good like was i so i was good. really impressed like because i was wondering where it was gonna go because i was like i hope it doesn't end up the way that you think it's supposed to end up yeah. and then like but you know but it kept you know he was just it it was a series of 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 events that just I almost said unfortunate events, but it would have been fun. some of them are unfortunate oh, some of them actually one of them was like devastating devastating the the, so, the bus yeah so yeah. um that i actually was like hands up that was painful in, to see in horror that was painful uh, to see like that was horrible because you could you could just feel that pain as a kid because like could all they went through to do what crushing. was yeah and all the other ones too right like, oh because so they did terrible. so much to do what they were doing and just like so, but i would highly recommend this movie um if you have kids if you don't have kids yeah like it's, it's just, got nothing. It's so, not, there's no bad language, no sex. No, there was there's nothing no, at all. Nothing it was a like problem. that. Never had a question at all at all with, with yeah. Kiddo at all. Um, I think it's and it in, and it doesn't speak poorly of video games overall. It doesn't preach against it. It it just is a commentary on the reality of the world. Yeah, at the that time it was in, in the, the late eighties. Right? Yeah, in sometime in the late eighties. Yeah, <laughs> where we totally wore helmets. Oh yeah. Were you wearing safety glasses? I was totally kind of wearing safety glasses. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Right. And Neil Patrick Harris did, I, I did a great Patrick. job with yeah. uh, his his narration and all that. Oh, through yeah, it, right? Right? His, his delivery of his lines, like it felt genuine as a, as a more of a parent feel like he was yeah. talking to his parent, his, his kid, kid. Right. Yeah. Um, so versus, it, you know, sometimes they can feel so. So no, fake. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. He felt like it was a real connection. And then. Yeah, very genuine and everything. Yeah. So. But yeah, no, 8 Big Christmas, uh, something to add to your Christmas watch list because it, it, it was a good Christmas movie. It, ha- it had some feels. It had some laughs. Like, yeah. You know, it was. And it was definitely a Christmas movie. It definitely was a Christmas movie. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. Not actually. Not actually. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, what are some other Christmas movies, though, uh, that you would, you would like. It's on our docket. Well, no, that you would say, you know, to someone to watch. Like, what are some of the ones, like, just a couple even. 
Um, honestly, like my go tos that I I know we have on our list is like I I love the Santa Claus franchise. Uh, Christmas Vacation is is always an amazing laugh, mm-hmm. a, and I think that one gets better as I get older too. When you, you just more family stuff, more yeah. things you're going through, um, and I, I I think that one just gets better uh, actually, and uh, so that's kind of what's what's on our list right now. Yeah. Um, and I know, of course, we have like Krampus and whatnot on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, um, that's mine. mine mine's but, always like watch Krampus. Yeah, because I think it's a great message. Yeah, it really is a great message uh, yeah. for the, the season. Right. Because we can get so caught up on the what we want and what we, you know, versus what we and then that almost is the same message with 8-bit. Right. Yeah. The, you know, the, the whole idea where like you're so caught up wanting something yeah that you forget to spend the time with the that people enjoy. that yeah. are around you and that's more right? important right? right so yeah you know with that though i i full-on expected uh david cross mm, to yes. be santa claus i was expecting that yes. weird whimsicalness to show up that he would actually but it turned out not to be which like the last awesome. like the uh, last the night before yeah where he's like uh, yeah where he's like something more yeah special. i was expecting it to be yeah a little guardian angel type yeah. thing right so yeah yeah i wouldn't have been surprised but then it's the concept though that he was it was just a, a human that yeah. was doing that right exactly so. but yeah so disney plus has Ernest saves christmas oh yes and that is an amazing movie uh it's ridiculous but it is amazing jingle all the way is also on disney plus mm. uh with arnold and that that's a, a ridiculous one too that i want to rewatch. yeah um but you know yeah but i'm glad i watched noel i i really like that one i think that's kind of been my little special one that i um that i really want to try to watch every year i think because yeah. it's such a different one you know it's funny you know i always wanted to make sure we watch a christmas a christmas carol version of some sort but I think we've gotten amassed so many other Christmas movies now that I, you know, it's okay kind of holding that back. I mean, 30 plus years of Christmas Carol is kind of a little. Well, for a while, it was like the only thing available. Now, really. But now, yeah, now it's like there's so many other options yeah. and it's not like it's a bad thing. Um, but I, I used to always have to watch Muppet Christmas Carol or, or something like that. And like, even Mickey's Christmas Carol was a huge thing for me when I was younger. And then we watched Duck the Halls. I'm like, well, that one is hilarious and a good message. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to go to something so mellow and dramatic with, with Mickey's Christmas Carol. Right. So, but honestly, the, the claws that, that one was really, really good. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be bad to try to find that again, actually. So, um, but uh, I really like the prep and landing ones. Those are cute. Oh, those are on Disney Plus as well. And I think those are fun because you we see so much of a, a basis on Santa and, you know, on an elf's perspective and the idea of the, the, the help, Santa's little helpers yeah. in a different context yeah, than just right? making toys. Totally. I think that's really fun. No, that, those are great little because shorts. Because I think the... the uh, the science nerd of me when it's the how to Santa do this and yeah. you see all that and you're like, that's how he does it. <laughs> yeah. The first one I definitely like more than the second one. Yeah. Uh, the, the, just the prep and landing prep yeah. and landing naughty and night 90 and nice is a little more drawn out. Yeah. But those are really fun shorts. Like yeah. I really like those. So yeah, so there you go. Some Christmas movies to look at and to enjoy, to go find, to go experience and have fun with. Get your jolly holiday jingle jangle on. Mm. Um, find yourself under the mistletoe because remember, mistletoe is deadly. Yeah. Jingle jangle. See, then it just reminds me of my right. year without Santa Claus. So <laughs> uh, next week coming up for you, we're going to be having Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm very excited. Uh, that'll be an exciting experience. The first time back to theater since uh, Sang-Chi mm-hmm. and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So yeah. since September. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's exciting. Oh, we went and saw a movie. We had to. Have. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. What did we see? I don't remember. We didn't. We did. We didn't. We had to have. How? Because we had to. That was after the vaccine mandate was there. We we went after the vaccine. Oh, mandate we saw there. suicides. No, yeah. it was you and me. We went for something. No, we went and saw suicides go out a second time. Okay. That was after the vaccine mandate. We can look back at the podcast episodes. Oh, oh, we're looking. Um, we're looking. But we're looking. No, we didn't see. We had, not that I'm aware of. I think it was just the second time we saw the squad. Oh, huh. but that was in the summer, wasn't it? No, that nope. I'm aware of. 
Okay. So now we're gonna ramble on the podcast. We're gonna be crazy. No, we gotta just shut down now. We're good. Wait, but um, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're wand. We're we're we're, we're, you're we're right. We're, it was a no. It was Shang Chi. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about. Or you went to a movie without me. That is not the so, case. So uh, who are you going to movies with? <laughs> no. Dramatic pause. It's like Dateline. <laughs> well, everyone, Merry Christmas! Almost. I hope. All of your plans of shopping and chaos in the days coming up to Christmas have gone well. Until next time, have a wonderful night. Thanks for joining us. And remember, stay rad, dudes.